and welcome back to Let's Play Super Smash Bros. 64 with your host Pitmarth Roy. In the last episode, we finished up Yoshi's Adventure mode, so to speak. And now we're going to finish up Pikachu's because we got pretty far into this one, so there's no way we're not going to get it finished here. Alright, here's a motion sensor bomb. As its name implies, you let it sit there and once it, somebody goes over it, they're going to get killed. Like that. It's one of the best items in my opinion. Just because it's funny whenever a human player forgets that it's there. And we have Mew. Which Mew doesn't do anything. I think it gives you like, it says you've encountered Mew for the first time whenever you finish the fighter adventure or whatever. In Brawl it'll give you stickers. And then we have Onyx who drops rocks on the level. Which is pretty much a one-hit kill against these guys. And that one was explosive. Sometimes the crates or barrels will be explosive. Or the capsules. So you gotta watch out for that. I have been killed by many of the exploding crates and stuff like that. Not because somebody threw them at me, but because I threw one at somebody else and I was too close and it exploded and they died. So yeah, those are pretty irritating items at points whenever they just randomly explode. Mew catch. I didn't catch Mew, it was already in the Pokeball. I never actually really hacked the game. Like, I never hacked any of the Pokemon games for any legendaries. If I have a legendary, it's because I actually caught it in the game. Like, I have a Rayquaza because I caught it in Emerald, stuff like that. Oh, I didn't get to hit him fast enough. Now, once you get him below 100 HP, you might notice some of his attacks be a little, will be a little bit different. For example, whenever he shoots, pretending his gun is a hand or something like that, whenever he shoots out the bullets, he's going to do three rounds instead of one. But you may not see that just yet. I don't know. Fortunately, I actually managed to get rid of him. Not really, really quickly, but fast enough to where we didn't get to see that. But we will probably see it at one point or another, just for the simple fact that, you know, it's, it's going to show up within 12 characters. There's no way it's not going to. So I was going to stop and find a good point to record the second LP that I am just now starting, but you've probably already seen at least the first video of it. While I would normally end the, uh, the uh, video off right here, there's actually one other thing I can do. I'm guessing it's such uh, incredible because I didn't lose a life. So now we have our second challenger who is clearly the worst Pokemon in the entire series, and also the worst brawler in all three brawl games, which is Jigglypuff. The balloon Pokemon that's absolutely useless. And it makes me wonder why Lucario couldn't destroy it completely in brawl, because in the actual games, normal is weak to fighting. But apparently they don't, they don't count special Pokemon damage in that game. Yeah, it's Charmander. Good for you, Charmander. Don't you dare fall off. There we go. I nearly died. That was sad. Of course, it wasn't Jigglypuff. It was just being an idiot. Now you can use the balloon Pokemon Jigglypuff. Not that we'd want to, but we kind of have to unlock her for this Let's Play. So I'm going to go ahead and get the third character really quickly. Jigglypuff's over here, by the way. Now to get this third character, you need to get all of the break the targets done with all the regular characters, I believe. 
Now, I said go ahead and get a few of these done, but I'm just going to go ahead and do them all, so that way if I fail on the actual target test whenever I'm showing off adventure slash one player with all the characters, then it won't be that big of a deal because I'll already have it, you know, done with everybody. Now, I'm not going to do board the platforms just yet, just because... Alright, so there's Mares. Mares really isn't that hard. The overall goal of Break the Targets is just trying to get you to use every, your characters every single move, or at least most of them. Okay, they clearly want you to do a side attack right here. Yeah. DK's is actually probably one of the easiest ones. Okay, they're both over there. Just checking. Oh, I'm sorry, they're all three over there. Yeah, once again, there's another suicide target. There's usually at least one in every level. Here's Link, who actually probably has one of the hardest target tests, in my opinion. Now, Link's got really, really bad... He's got a really bad up beef, recovery-wise, so... Here's the worst target right here. You need to pull out a bomb, jump twice and throw it up, but you need to hit, tap up as you're throwing it up, or else it's not going to get high enough. And that's what made this target test so hard for me when I first did it, because that's actually really hard if you don't know how to do it. Because if you don't know how to do that, then you're not going to get that target. Let's go ahead and do Samus's really quickly. If I have time, I'll do some of the extra characters. That move that I just used was her down B, by the way, because you're going to need that, because there's more than one quote-unquote suicide target. That reminds me of a comedian. I wish the first word that I ever said in my life was quote. That way, right before I died, I could say unquote. Now, you don't have to fully charge the laser. You can just get a small one or even a medium one, but small one even works to get that last one. We already got Yoshi's done. We'll go ahead and do Kirby's. Kirby's overall isn't horrible. It does make you utilize several of your B moves, but that doesn't make it really, really hard. You just need to know where you need to let go of the B moves. For example, I'm using down B right here, but if you hold it for too long, then you're gonna die. Okay, let's jump over here. Jump. One, two, three, and there we go. One, two, three, four, five. And you gotta use his up B, which is the Fury Cutter, which will make him send his sword up in the air and then back down. So now we're just gonna do Foxes. Which, now that I've used all the other characters, I'm not used to Fox's speed, because he's got really good speed overall. And here's a very annoying target right here. Fortunately, I got it fairly easily. Alright, there are those two. And I didn't get that one, so A... Alright, you gotta hit, like, a button on the D-pad. Yeah, even though the retry says L on this, apparently you have to hit a button on the D-pad. I don't know if it's L on the D-pad or not, but it's just weird. Just keep in mind, this was originally for the 64, so they expect you to hit the L button on the 64 controller, not the GameCube controller or the Classic controller or whatever you're using. Okay, I said the target was hard, and I've hit it twice in three tries. There we go. You can also use the gun, that's a little bit easier, but, you know, whatever. So once you get all those, you'll get your third character, which is obviously Luigi. Now, the last character you used on the target test, that's who you're going to face him with. So if you're not good against defeating characters, then you're going to want to go for, you know, you're going to want to get your pe best character's target test done last. Okay, he didn't make it. I'm victorious. 
We can now use Luigi the Eternal Understudy, proving that this game hates Luigi just like every other Nintendo game. Alright, we got some time left, so let's go ahead and do the hidden characters, because they're overall not too bad. Jigglypuffs is pretty evil, but the rest of them aren't that bad. Even the final hidden character who is still unlocked isn't that bad overall. Now, if you notice that Punch kind of had some fire to it, that's Luigi's Fire Punch. His regular up B won't do a lot of damage if you're actually aiming for damage, but if it hits head on with something, it'll actually do a lot of damage. Alright, so I, I'm thinking this is the suicide target. I mean, I know there's. There might be a way to prevent actually having any suicide targets there, but whatever. So now we have Valkins, who really isn't that hard. That one down there, that's a suicide. They really want you to use the Valken Punch, which is Captain Valken's regular B move. Because I think you have to use the Valken Punch on at least three targets. And then this one down here, obviously, is a suicide. And now Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff's got one of the worst target tests by far. In fact, she probably has the worst target and board the platforms. Hers are just flat and annoying. And really, the first eight aren't that bad, but look where the last two are. Yeah, they were absolute jerks with these. Fortunately, I can cheat the system. Of course, I did it wrong, but it wants you to jump five times from there, but if you jump from up here, you're going to have better height, just automatically, so. One, two, three, four. See? Much easier if you do that. I wish Boltage McGammer had known that whenever he was doing this target test, because it took him a long time to get that one done. But I got it done on the first try. But that's all I can do for right now, because this last character is still locked. Um, I got a little bit more time. I guess I could do a couple of the board the platforms. Now, unfortunately, you can't unlock the third bonus, you know, the race to the finish thing. You can unlock that, which I'm not sure why, you know, it seems like if you beat bonus one and bonus two with everybody, you should be allowed to do bonus three, but it's just a race to the finish. I mean, you don't get anything for, you don't get anything at all for completing it with everybody, and I don't think you get anything for board the platforms at all. Now, it shows your time, and it'll show, like, the total time of everybody combined whenever you beat it with everybody, but other than that, you know, nothing special. So yeah, Luigi's can be tough. Mario's is very, very simple in my opinion. Just like a typical Mario game, it's going to be platforming, but it's really not hard. If you touch the asset, it's going to hurt you. Obviously, those platforms go down. These try to push you off. The only one's kind of hard, and it's not really hard because you can fall off, it's just annoying as this one right here. But if you just stand straight up and use your up B, you'll make it onto that really small thing. So it's not hard, really. Donkey Kong, another one that's very, very easy in my opinion. You're probably going to get hit by the acid here, but it's not a big deal if you do. It's not like you lose if you hit the acid. And the last one is over here, obviously. So here we go. Jump, jump, go. 
See, I'm not really having trouble with this. If you've played the other games, you're probably not going to have much trouble with this, or you're a really good platformer in the Mario games. You're not going to have trouble with these. Like I said, the worst one's Jigglypuff on actually both of them. There are some board the platforms that are pretty hard, but the worst one's probably still Jigglypuff. Which actually probably doesn't surprise too many of you. Lynx is moderate, I'd say. I wouldn't say it's easy or hard, I'd say it's moderate. It's got some hard ones in it, but it's, you know, also, it gives you several. You know, there are some that just, they flat out give you all of them. And I'll state that honestly, they just flat out, there's some where they flat out really didn't try. Or at least in my opinion, they didn't try. It's, you know, it's one of those where, oh please, anybody can get that platform. This one down here can be kind of hard. But I fortunately managed to get it right. So, uh, that's all I'm going to do for now. So, I guess we'll do the other board of the platforms later, which is Kirby, Fox, Samus, Falcon, Jigglypuff, and that hidden character. But we will get the hidden character and the final character next time. So, I will see you guys then. Later.